Data security. Ever heard of it? I'm willing to bet you have. A major so-called ransomware attack is underway worldwide. So that a second major cyber attack is underway right now. The Secret Service is investigating a major data breach at Target. Approximately 40 million customers' credit and debit cards may have been compromised. Our is the biggest hack in the history of the world in terms of scale. Yahoo's had an information breach that's affected almost a half billion accounts. Told you so. As we increasingly move everything that we do to online services, your data is more valuable than ever. And more vulnerable too. This is especially true in education. Data breaches in the educational sector are increasing more than any other industry out there right now. Here are some graphs to back that up. Why is education getting hit so hard? There's a few reasons for that. Number one, getting information about a student or a minor is super valuable because, well, they may not know about it until they're much older. Number two, schools don't really have the money to afford the best security systems out there or the personnel to run those systems. Three, schools employ a lot of people. That means a lot of W-2s, that means a lot of social security numbers, that means a lot of bank account information. Now here at USBE, we actually have a strong security system in place. Just ask Jared Hill, our information security manager, if our system is top notch. Jared? Yep. Thanks, Jared. A study states that 95% of all data breaches are caused by human error. Well, that's why you're here watching this video right now to help better secure your data and the data that you have access to. Now we are going to cover five things that you can do today to better secure data that you work with. Let's go. Number one, don't leave physical files hanging around. We focus so much on digital security that we often forget about things just laying around our office. Now, if you have physical files that have employee information or student PII, PII stands for personally identifiable information. If you're not currently working with those files, you need to put them in a secure place. Maybe a filing cabinet with a lock. If you don't currently have a filing cabinet with a lock, ask for one. Anytime you leave your desk for any reason and for any amount of time, you need to make sure that you lock your computer. If you have a Windows machine, you simply push the Windows key and the L key at the same time. If you're using a Mac, you're gonna push the Control key, the Shift key, and the Power key. And honestly, it takes, what, maybe two seconds? You just have to remember to do it. Remember to do it. Remember to do it. Remember to do it. But locking your computer is not gonna be that helpful if the passwords to your computer are found all over your monitor or under your keyboard. So. Don't write your passwords down on post-it notes. Since we're on the subject, creating strong passwords is actually the second thing we want to talk to you about today. Whenever you create a password, you want to make it as strong as possible. What makes a strong password strong? I thought you'd never ask. Long passwords with a mix of letters, numbers, symbols, and even spaces is a good start. The more random your password is, and the longer you can make it, the better it's going to be. Using your cat's name and the year of your bar mitzvah isn't going to be that strong, especially if you're using it across multiple sites. Don't use the same password for more than one site, like ever. It's not very smart. Don't allow the browser to remember your username and your password. Yes, I know it's easier, but it's also very unsafe. I know, it's hard to remember all those passwords. I completely understand, but there's a better way. May I introduce to you the password manager. With a password manager, you only need to know one password and it remembers the rest. Here's an informative video that explains what a password manager is and what it does. It's basically an app that keeps all of your passwords secure inside of a safe that only you can unlock. This way you only need to remember one password. And once you unlock the safe, you can see all of your many different passwords in one place. Since it's an app, you can access your passwords from any device you've installed it on. And since you don't need to remember all your passwords anymore, you can make them really long and complicated. So what happens if your password manager gets hacked? They would have access to all of your individual passwords then, right? Not necessarily. The password manager encrypts your data. So if a hacker looks inside your safe, all they'll see is scrambled passwords. LastPass was hacked in 2015, and users had to change their master passwords, but the individual passwords inside were safe because of this encryption. It may seem like it would be annoying to have to retrieve your password for every single website, but actually, most password managers have browser plugins that automatically fill your info in for you. 
So in many cases, it's actually easier. And besides, it's better than the alternative. Becoming one of the millions of Americans that get hacked every year. Wow, a password manager does all of that? That was a great video. Now there are a lot of password managers out there, and there's a few that we suggest like LastPass, KeePass, and 1Password. The important thing is to find something that works for you, and we promise you're gonna learn to love it. One important thing I forgot to mention is that a password manager doesn't actually work to log onto your computer, so you may need to remember two passwords. Number three, share data the right way. Never send secure data over email. It's not smart, it's not safe. The same thing is true for sending things over the cloud. Try to use shared drives over an internal network whenever possible. They're more secure. That's why we have them. If you're sharing a large amount of information with an outside entity that doesn't have access to your shared drive, you may want to use something like Moveit, which is a safe file transfer protocol. If you're presenting or sharing data with an outside entity, be careful about the samples that you use. Always consider the end size or the sample size of your data because depending on the size, you may need to redact it or suppress it. Also, you should only access data that is required for your job. If someone is sending you information or giving you access to data that you don't need, first of all, delete it. Second, let them know about it. You know, talking about data privacy and security sure is tiring work. I just wish, you know, somebody were here to help me out. Um, you, you, sir. Do you know anything about data privacy and security? Why, yes. Yes, I do. Could you please talk to them a little bit more about it? Sure, what would you like me to talk about? I think we're on number four, which is planning for malware attacks. Malware, phishing, spear phishing, ransomware, DDoS, phishing. They go by different names, but they all try to do one thing, access your computer. You know, the movies make it seem like hacking is really difficult, but it's not that hard in real life. Here's a quick video to show you just how easy a hack can really be. Step one, spoof his number so it looks like he's calling from inside the company, and then call tech support. Hello, you there? Hello? Hi, this is Ken, how may I help you? I was wondering if uh, you can uh, take a look at a website I'm trying to get to. It's for a uh, big customer thing I'm working on for Monday, and uh, I can't seem to get to the website from my computer. Sure. Uh... I'll see if I can get to it. Thanks, man. I really appreciate the help. I mean, it could be a stupid thing. So it's uh, it's 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 www. Survey. That's uh, s u r v e y. Dash pro. Com. Yeah, I got a prompt to open. I just clicked open, and I'm at the site now. Here's what the IT guy doesn't realize. By clicking that link, he's just given David full access to his computer. Uh, yeah. Whoa. Okay, that's weird. I just hit it, and it works. It seems like it's working fine now. Awesome. Well, I don't know what you did, man, but I really appreciate the help. Hey, no problem, that was easy. First and foremost, keep your computer software up to date. If you get that little box in the corner of the screen saying it's time for an update, update your software. Most types of malware involve email. So let's go over a couple things you can do to avoid being hacked. You should never open email attachments from a source you don't recognize. Don't click on links embedded in an email or on an attachment unless you are certain it is safe. Hackers have tons of tricks they can use to try and fool you, but there's some warning signs you can look for. Let's look at an example. They claim to be from Facebook, but the email doesn't seem right because their email should have Facebook in there somewhere. It's a generic name for the people contacting you. If it was really Facebook, they would know your name. If you're unsure about the link on the page, well, you can hover over it, and at the bottom corner of the web page, it'll tell you where it directs to. It doesn't say anything about Facebook in the corner. So we can assume that this is a fishy site. <laughs> Do you think you've received an email that's fishy? You'll want to contact your information security manager to look into it. Right, Jared? Yep. Odds are, if you've received a phishing email, others in the building have as well. This way, we can warn others of what to look out for. If you feel like you've clicked on an attachment or a link in an email that was maybe a phishing attack, you'll want to contact your information security manager as soon as possible. The sooner they know, the sooner they can resolve the problem and fix any damage that the malware has caused. And remember, hackers can be sneaky. They can get your data with just a simple phone call. So beware. Good rule of thumb to follow is don't give any secure information over the phone if it's an inbound call. 
Hackers have clever ways to mask their phone numbers, so don't rely solely on caller ID. This brings us to our last tip to prevent a data breach. Number five, backing up, storing, and destroying data correctly. Valuable information should never be stored on your computer's desktop or local drives. Storing that kind of information on the network servers is one of the safest things you can do. First off, it's more secure once it's on our network. Secondly, we back it up every day to an external site. That means if we ever get hacked, we can delete everything, wipe the system clean, and restore it. Good as new. But if you've been storing your data on your desktop or local drives and you get hacked or attacked by ransomware, there is no way to restore your data. That reminds me, sometimes the safest way to deal with data is to destroy it. This includes physical files which will need to be shredded and disposed of properly. Not just thrown away in the trash can. Not left in the shredder where anyone can find them and slowly piece them back together. And those are the five things that you can do today to make data security more secure. So what are you waiting for? Take the post-it notes off your computer. Put those files in your cabinet. Lock them up. Sign up for a password manager. I got nothing but time on my hands. I'm just going to kind of wait around here until you start doing some of this stuff. Uh-huh. Any day now. Just gonna wait right here until you do it. Just be accruing some comp time.